Hello, I'm Tess Lynch, and today we're going to be talking about Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Listen, I'm gonna transport you back in time. Picture it, Florida, the 1920s. There's a special place that is the craziest environment that you can find called the Everglades. But South Florida is experiencing an unprecedented population explosion. So they're draining wetlands, building houses. The developers are like, great. I'm gonna build condos. I'm gonna build little tiny ticky 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 houses. Hey, look at this swamp. It's full of bullshit. I'm gonna put a in 99 cent store on it. But the problem with this is that everybody's draining the resources of one of the most unique ecosystems on the planet, mm. the Everglades. <laughs> and Ernest Coe, a landscape architect, realizes like, this place is special as hell. I'm gonna get this place certified as a national park if it's the last thing I do. And so he's flipping through the, uh, the important people of Florida directory, and he comes across a name, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. She's a very interesting lady. She's like, you know, I'm a very early supporter of the ACLU, and I'm supporting, you know, women's suffrage and civil rights. And that's just what I do. I'm opinionated. And Co is like, this is the perfect person to get on board with my cause. And Co is like, come with me to the Everglades. And so she goes down to the Everglades, and she's all in her pearls, and she's wearing her straw hat. She's like, yikes, this place is too muggy, too buggy, too inhospitable. It's mucky and gucky. I don't like it. And then she's looking around, she's gonna be like, holy shit, that's a crocodile holding hands with an alligator is what that is. That's a manatee. That thing looks like a cow under the ocean floor. That's a mangrove tree. That's growing in the breakage water that's half salt, half fresh. And I don't know how that thing grows, but it's doing it. I actually think I love this place. I'm gonna be a champion for here. There's a bug in front of me. What? You see that bug. I see you seeing the bug. Yeah, I see the bug. I love bugs, but that bug I don't like. It's like he's like antagonistic. He's there. I could grab him, but I don't want to kill him. I just want to release him to nature. You know what I mean? That's nice. He'll make you going. So, they go to these town hall meetings. The developers are like, malls, malls, malls. Co and Marjorie are like, shut the f up, protect the Everglades. And the legislators are like, <laughs> oh, all right. But, I mean, it's not gonna be so simple as like. Co says to Marjorie, I think they're saying that this land is pretty much protected. And Marjorie's like, don't you know the government by now? It's gonna be a long fought battle, Co. So, Marjorie goes down into the Everglades and she spends 13 crazy long years writing every detail down. You know, I'm gonna write a book. The Everglades, River of Grass. Oh, that's a good title, goddammit. 1947, this thing is published. Immediate bestseller. So people are like, holy shit. I was just sort of thinking about my casseroles, now I'm a fucking activist. All of a sudden, the Everglades are really important to people who never cared before. And then later that year, the first 1.3 million acres of the Everglades are officially designated, designated, designated as a national park, just like Co and Marjorie had wanted. But then Ernest Co dies. Aww. It's so sad. Most people could kind of kick back. Guess what? She doesn't quit. You know why? Girl likes a challenge. So when she hears the Nixon administration is planning to build Miami Nash International Airport on the Everglades, she just can't let it slide. Would you mind if I make your drink just a little higher? I would love is it. Is that okay? <laughs> You're simply the test. This is a very small wine glass. Yeah, they catch up on you there. Let me know when. Now? Cool. So what she does, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas meets the Nixon administration on the runway. And they're like, you're such a pebble in my shoe. She's a nuisance. She won't budge. Mm -hmm. And Nixon is like, fine. We'll build it somewhere else. And she goes, I'll see you next time, bozos. And she skips away. How can you argue with someone who's like, don't destroy nature? How can you? 
So Marjorie is looking back at what she's done and she's like, holy cow, it's the third largest national park and that's nothing to shrug at. I'll just keep going till I die. And she does. In 1998, at the age of 108, the Everglades, for a moment, grow silent. And there's a manatee. And he's like, ah, there she goes. The mother of the Everglades. Darkness. To quote Marjorie, be a nuisance where it counts. Be depressed, discouraged, and disappointed at failure and the disheartening effects of ignorance, greed, corruption, and bad politics. But never give up. Today, the students at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School carry on that idea by turning their pain into action. And they are the pebble in the shoe. They are the nuisance. They are the people who will not let something so important be taken away. There are some things that are too special to take. Cheers. Being a nuisance. Cheers. Sweaty here in the Everglades. Very sweaty.